Hey everybody, welcome to the Mixer Brush Painting Lecture. I uh, decided to do this online for a change, and let's see how it goes. So, I'm going to show you the Mixer Brush today, and that can be found right underneath the paint brush over here on the left. If you click and hold, from all the way down, it's the bottom one, the Mixer Brush. But before we get going, I'm going to just give you kind of a layout of what the goal is. Uh, as you know in Photoshop, there's lots of filters, and we can simply run a filter to turn something into a painting. But it looks very poor, mechanical, and there's really no artistic style to it because it's just an algorithm that Photoshop runs. Um, so using the mixer brush, we're going to do it by hand. Uh, I'll do a portion of it and show you some uh, uh, other student examples. So basically, I'm going to be taking this older gentleman. Um, don't smoke, kids. That's a great picture, so I have to keep using it. Um, use this picture, and we're going to turn it into more of a, an oil painting. Sometimes it even looks kind of clay-like, but it comes out being a really cool effect. Um, I have some student examples that I will run through. Uh, here we go. Here's one student example. It's kind of a little clay a little bit clay looking, I guess. And this one here is very much a oil painted type of feel to it, which is really kind of nice. And you don't have to use this particular gentleman. Uh, you can use whatever image you want. The suggestion would be something with defining lines, um, uh, older uh, individuals with the, the cracks and you know defined lines in their face work great. Um, trees with deep cut bark works well and also animals um, while this particular picture does not have a lot of defining lines in it i just think it's a great example of how you can use the mixer brush to do animals and people in a very wet um, kind of half oil half watercolory sort of way um, so let me close these to give up some uh, processing space New, there you go. And uh, I'm going to show you really quick how we do this. Uh, the process once you set your um, your brush up is incredibly easy. It's it's like paint by number. But the trick is you have to know how to set your brush up. Now I'm just using a mouse. If you are using a tablet, which I strongly suggest you do. Um, you can actually uh, skip the step that I'm going to show you about having some brush tilt to it um, because the brush, uh, the tablet should pick up the tilt automatically. Um, it's, a, it's a nice little uh, way around it. So um, I'm actually, I have to throw away my title layer as well, um, and I'll kind of explain why uh, in a moment. Uh, the brush uh, pulls ink from all layers, so I, it would turn into a very dark. Uh, image. Uh, so the first step is to get your image. Um, the higher the resolution, the better quality and the more detail you'll get, but the more painting you're going to have to do because of the more pixels. Um, so that's the best thing I can tell you for the types to get. Um, elderly people with lots of defining lines, animals with defining fur, uh, trees I mentioned, all sorts of good things. Um, and then I would go for a pretty high resolution because they always turn out much better. You want to have it on its own layer, could be the background layer, that's fine. And then you're going to make a new layer, and we're going to just call that the paint layer. Um, and that's it. Now don't forget to label your layers because that's, uh, you know, a huge portion of your grade right there. Uh, and I'm going to make sure that I have this one as old. Man, there you go. Maximum credit right there for the layered portion. Okay, um, so I need to get a brush, so I'm going to go down to the mixer brush here. Um, I like using kind of a hard edge brush. I think that that um, defines the uh, edge of the brushes to make it look more watercolory. Uh, and I, it doesn't have to be hard. You, you, you could even, you know, bring it down a little bit, like 80% or something. I'll, I'll use today. 
Uh, you then want to make sure that the size of your brush um, isn't going to blurt out the detail. So the smaller the brush, the more detail, the less it'll actually look like you did because you'll really be just sampling um, pixel for pixel and putting down the same pixel. So you want to have it, you know, decently large. For this one, I think 64 is too large. Uh, let's try something like 30-ish. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good number in there. I'm going to zoom in so I can get some nice detail. One more. There we go. Look at that. Get some of these nice defining lines in here. Uh, I might even, maybe I'll go make it a little bit smaller, actually. Let's go to 25. Ah, look at that, right on my spot. Okay, um, and so that's kind of the, the first setup. The second thing is um, up here under the mixer brush, you're going to see, um, I'm going to just go across the top here and ignore the ones that I'm not talking about. Um, under type of brush, I like using um, wet or wet light or wet heavy mix. I'm just going to go for the generic wet. You can always change as needed. Basically, that's the look, the style you're looking for. Is it, it going to look more wet or look more of a dry brush? And also, light mix is how much you want to sample the pixels around for kind of a, I don't know, a smudge-like effect inside. Um, I typically will do wet or wet light mix. Yeah, I'll try that today. Um, continually going across. Um, this is if you want to get more specific, but I like just using the generics. Um, and then we can get all the way over here, and this is the magic button, sample all layers. You have to make sure that is clicked on, otherwise um, you'll not pick up any paint on the layer that you're, you're trying to uh, paint with. So you see over here on the right, old man is selected. You want to make sure paint layer is selected. Um, you can even uh, lock the old man layer if you really want. I don't think that's going to make a difference. Okay. So in Photoshop versions in the past, um, you had to sample the background layer and put it down. Um, but you know in the newest Photoshop, they kind of uh, flip things like the shift key for uh, making things in proportion. So I found actually in 2020, um, for these two brush icons in the top left corner, one of them um, says load the brush after each stroke. You actually want to turn that off. If you have um, a version that's um, older than 2020, I found that you want to have it on and Alt-click for a sample layer. So try it each way if you don't know what version you have. But for 2020, um, I found that it works better if this is off. And then you want to clean your brush. That's the next one. You want to make sure that it's clicked on. Um, so that every time you sweep your mouse across the screen or, or your, your pen, um, you're grabbing new paint. All right, so that's basically the tools, um, and now we can start drawing. I'm going to start with, um, I like using these uh, smile lines. Maybe I can make this click. And you're going to see it, it kind of just looks like it's blurring it as it goes down, but slowly over time, you're going to start making it look pretty cool. Now remember that back layer is still there. So you can resample that as needed. That back layer. Um, it's going to look a little muddy at first as you're doing this. I'm just getting really close to the nose. Um, and you're also going to find that with, with the technique, you know, you're going to want to kind of over judge a little bit like I'm doing here and then you're going to want to grab from the other direction and just kind of like uh, mix it together with that, that light mix that I got going there. Yeah, let's see if we can kind of in there. I'm grabbing a little too close to the black so I'm going to just kind of pull that back down again knowing that I'm sampling off the back layer which is why it's lighter. And you can kind of go back and forth a little bit with this. Um, I'm just going to kind of focus on following kind of his, his skin pattern here a little bit. 
go, kind of squeeze them out all together. Close with his nose. Here we go. And they don't have to be straight lines. You totally can do curves and whatnot. Come in here. Here we go. I'm going to bring it back the other way to get some more detail on there. Back down. Here we go. Again, um, the muddy nature of it is completely normal until you kind of um, pull away. We're, we're at 300% um, magnification right now. So, um, and that's so that I can kind of get in here with his pores and, and everything else. A little bit more detail around his nose. That's why I'm doing like shorter strokes. Oh. See if I can erase that. Oh, there you go. Better to bring it in. Follow here. Bring it back a little bit. And then bring it back around again. Come down. There we go. Look, I've got that kind of a good look going in there. You can hear my mouse clicking more than likely. Um, so totally normal. Lots of clicks happening. Uh, you can change your opacity if you want to kind of um, find that crack in the middle of it. Here you go. Um, if you want to do kind of a, a lighter version of this and go over it a couple of times, I've seen people do that. It comes out really nice. Um, you know, I'm just trying to put this together, kind of this darker patch of skin, bringing it in and bringing it out a little bit, and then kind of pulling it back in again. Um, so the first question people always ask is, do I have to do the whole picture? And the answer is yes. Um, it, you want to have consistency with, you know, your images. Um, it also will not take you long. Some people just kind of set out on this. Um, I'm almost done my um, my example here, and we'll see. So you can see all these little painterly lines going on in here, uh, over to the nose and whatnot. I'm just going to go right to the midpoint of the nose. Very black lips. Looking bad, kids. All right. Um, trying to find that lip a little. There you go. Just pull it from the side. There you go. Uh, again, you can change the opacity if that's what you're trying to do. Um, you don't have to keep watching me do this. I'm, I'm really coming up to my stopping point. Just going to smooth out this edge and then I'm going to pull back. All right. So you can see kind of this painterly look. I'm going to zoom out. Look at that. You can really kind of see that. I'll, I'll sort of zoom back in one step. There we go. Um, and the cool thing is it's just on the paint layer. The original image is still there. Um, if you needed to, you could actually erase on the paint layer and put it back down again. Um, your streaks would be interrupted, but you know it, it looks pretty good. Um, so this is you know what we're looking for, and as I showed before in those examples, um, it's really okay to have different stylistic options. Um, you can use bigger brush, less opacity, um, things like that for this. Um, but that is essentially what uh, the project is all about. And you can see here it is starting to come out. You can see all the little holes <laughs> that come out. Um, you should try to fill them in. Um, yeah. So I hope this is enough to, to help you get going. Um, it's really those settings at the top. I'll run through it one more time. Um, pick a good size brush. I don't do. I do a little bit of hardness. I think I'm at 80%. You want to make sure that load the brush after each stroke is off. 
we want to have a cleaner brush after you stroke on. This was wet light mix, so you can pick anything that um, is not dry and get a really good effect with it. And these all have to do with the mixes and the flows and all that. And then make sure a sample all layers is on. That way you get the layer behind. Um, yeah, use a tablet. It'll make things so much easier and so much faster. It's paint by number. Hope you enjoy. Take care.